Hi everyone, good morning. This is Sarita from Hasha Trainings. So we thought to start the sessions on interview questions with Hasha. So uh, only on advanced topics in PEGA. Today we are going to start with data pages. Along with these data pages, we are going to cover all the topics in PEGA like case management, UI topics and uh, job scheduler queue processes and uh, SLAs, routing and rule resolution and uh, integration in that so, uh, SOAP integration and REST integration and declarative rules in that declare index and declare trigger and uh, along with that all the interview questions. So it hope it will help you to crack the interviews in future. Hi Harsha, today our topic is data pages. So let's get into questions. How to call data page in another data page? Yeah, we can call data page from another data page when we have the source of data transform or when the source of the data page can be uh, uh, like activity. Suppose if it is a data transform, within a data transform, anywhere if we use the or refer the name of another data page, then other data page will be automatically called. And similarly, in the activity also, in any of the methods, if you're going to refer a data page, then the data page will be called. And also we can use a method called load data page. So whenever a data page is being called, it will execute the source rule of either data transform or activity. Within those source rules, we can refer another data page name that also will be called. Okay. We have two data pages. One is thread level data page, another is node level data page. Okay. So we are calling thread level data page in node level data page. So, okay. uh, if daily 100 cases are getting created, uh, how many times node level data page gets called and how many times the thread level data page gets called? So, we are calling uh, thread level data page in node, node level, level data, data page, page. Right? Okay. So, whenever a request has been made, the first data page that is going to execute is node level data page and in the node level data page, thread level data page is being called. So, usually node level data page means it will get executed only once for all the requesters in the server. So in that case, when node level data page is getting loaded, it will make a call to thread level data page. So thread level data page also loads for the first time. So up for the first request, node level data page, thread level data page, both are loaded. And whenever the second request has been made, then it is going to request for node level data page. And now the node level data page has already been created in the previous request, it will be copied. So only when node level data page is getting executed, thread level will also get executed. But in the second request time, the node level data page is already loaded, so it will copy. So further, any requests that are being made, the node level or thread level won't be further executed. So for this uh, question, the node level as well as thread level data pages runs only once even if we create 100 or 1000 work objects. If it is vice versa? Uh, vice versa means uh, the thread level data page is called and within the thread level data page we are calling another node level data page okay in that case for the first request when it is being made thread level data page will get executed in a work object and thread level will call the node level and node level will get loaded and thread level also will get loaded when we are creating second work object the thread level data page is going to get executed again and within the thread level data page, it makes a call to node level data page. But node level data page is already been loaded in the previous request, right? That will be available for sharing, it will be copied. So overall, if you are creating 100 work objects, thread level data page gets executed 100 times, whereas node level data page executes only one time for its source rules and all. Okay, okay. Next question. What is the use of key data pages? Uh, on the data page, uh, when we select the database structure as list, then we will be getting one option called keys and which means that this data page can be passed with a key. So in, on the right side, we can choose key page access checkbox and we can choose the properties of the uh, properties as keys. So key data page, we are going to pass a key value to the data page. It's not like parameter passing, it is like key value we are passing in a page list. This key value for the data page can be passed only from one place in Pega that is when we are calling the data page from a page property. So from another page property when we are calling data page then we can uh, pass the keys for the data page and that is the only one place where we can call keyed access data pages. Okay. What is parameterized data page? Parameterized data page means on the data page we have a parameter stack there we can define parameters and wherever we are calling the data page 
it is going to prompt for the parameter values for example if you're calling the data page as a source for drop down at the time of calling it will prompt for a value and suppose if you're calling data page in an activity anywhere like we are just referring the name of the data page in a data transform or activity passing parameter value is something different that is uh, we have to write this way like data page name square braces and within the square braces name of the parameter colon value of the parameter and if you have more than one comma again name of the parameter colon value of the parameter for example d page one square brace within the square base param one colon value comma param two colon value like this we need to pass uh, values to the parameterized data page okay can you explain the difference between parameter data page and key data page with one scenario okay let me explain the difference between uh, parameterized and uh, keyed page access for the data pages uh, let's take an example let me tell you an example like uh, um, uh, if we are searching for a customer let's say for example we have a search screen there we are going to search uh, for customer details with the customer id so every customer id that we are going to search is going to be passed as a parameter to the data page in the data page i am going to do a lookup uh, means it is going to search for the operator i mean like the customer details see on the clipboard how it will get created whenever a customer id is been entered and click on a button probably let's say i'm calling an activity and activity is calling data page and data page is getting loaded okay if that is the case then data page is going to get created on clipboard for each parameter like d page d page of customer dot customer square brace customer id colon uh, let's say customer id one and second time when you when i perform a search it is going to create another instance of data page on the clipboard with a different parameter suppose if i ten search for 10 customers then i will be getting the data page on clipboard like 10 data pages with different parameter so 10 times the search will happen on the database and i have 10 customers data there and now keyed page access for the data page what happens is i am going to create a data page of list structure means all the customer data it will fetch 100 customers are there 100 customers it will fetch keyed page access for the data page now we are going to create a data page of list structure and define a key as customer id and this data page i am going to call from a page property let's say page property name is customer and page property is going to refer to customer class and there will be customer id property in the page property this page property customer dot customer id i am going to use it in a ui so when user enters the customer id there because it is a page property i am using this page property is calling data page which is having keys defined so now anytime when i enter the value in the customer id field there and click on search and refresh the screen then data page will be called automatically so when data page is executed it will fetch all the records of the customers means there are 100 customers entire list will be fetched and placed on the clipboard now my clipboard will have a data page with px results of 1 2 3 4 5 like this 100 now as i am searching for a customer id that customer id is the one which i am going to pass as a key to the data page when i when i pass it search will happen on the clipboard so previously when we are using parameterized data page for every customer search the search is happening by hitting the database but when we go with keyed page access the search will happen on the clipboard because database has already fetched all the customer details on the clipboard px results as you are passing the customer id as a key for data page of list structure now the search will happen on the px results list of the data page which is there on the clipboard and it is going to match with the customer id on px results 1 or 2 or maybe 9900 retrieve that page record and that will be automatically copied to the page on which you are calling the data page of keyed page access so that's how it is going to work so this is an efficient process there is no need to hit the database again and again when we go with keys okay that is very clear next question how can we load data page asynchronously a data page can be loaded asynchronously by calling the data page from an activity in an activity there is a method available load data page when we use that method and provide the data page name there then data page will get loaded asynchronously which means that activity at the calling step will not wait the activity will call the data page and will proceed forward on its way whereas data page gets executed in the background in a different thread like when we are calling an activity from another activity by using queue instruction how it asynchronously executes the same way load data page is going to execute the activity uh, and data page asynchronously okay we'll move on to next question how to use two data sources in data page okay 
in order to use two data sources in a data page, we have one option called aggregate source. If we go with aggregate source, mm -hmm. then we can call two different sources uh, for data page. Other than that, in the normal regular process also, we can add a one condition and add one more source and call multiple. And like it is a conditional sourcing we can implement. Okay, next question. Explain differences between editable, read-only and saveable data pages. Okay. Uh, read-only data pages gets created on clipboard under data pages category. These pages cannot be deleted. If you want to forcefully flush out these pages at the runtime, we need to call an OOTB activity flush data page. And editable, saveable data pages gets created on clipboard under user pages itself. Whereas editable data page purpose is to manipulate the data after it has been retrieved. Saveable data page purpose is, is it is an alternate for OBJ save. OBJ open plus OBJ save, which means that using a saveable data page, we can insert a new record into table, we can open the existing record from the table, modify and save it back. Saveable data pages we can call by using a flow shape called uh, save data page uh, and also a method in the activity called uh, save data page. Okay, we move on to next question. What is lookup source option in data pages? Yeah, the, the lookup option in data pages uh, is an alternate for OBJ open. Uh, where the lookup option is used in order to fetch single record from the data page, I mean like data table, uh, using class key. Okay, we move on to next question. Why editable data pages not having node scope? Okay, uh, editable data pages uh, concept is like we wanted to manipulate the data on the data page. For example, if if the let's let's consider like there is option available uh, node scope for editable data pages. What happens is when requester one fetches the data. Uh, actual source data uh, and place it on the clipboard and that page will be shared for all other requesters. Let's imagine like requester 1 has manipulated the data. When requester 2 is going to make a request for node level data page, it is going to present the manipulated data to requester 2. But actually requester 2 is expecting the original data when in this case data inconsistency will be there. Okay. So, because of these issues, Pega has removed the option of node scope for the editable data pages. Okay, we move on to next question. Why access group is mandatory for node level data pages? Okay, uh, when node level data page is getting, low, uh, getting created, it requires an access group in the load management tab. The reason for making uh, access group available for node level data pages is, let, uh, let me explain you with an example like, uh, suppose if requester 1 who belongs to an access group of manager is requesting for node level data page and the data page has been loaded if it has been loaded it should be shared for all other requesters when requester 2 having user access group when he is going to request for the same data page again the data page will be shared for requester 2 also imagine that there is no access group at all on the data page in this case what happens requester 1 of manager access group who is requesting for the data page and has fetched the data that data page data will be shared to another requester who is having access group of user. What happens here is like uh, the access group manager may have access to other application like application 1 and access group user may have access to application 2. Uh, if the source of the data page is an activity in the application 1 activity will get executed and for user 2 actually application 2 activity should get executed. But as the data page is going to get shared, which is node level, the activity which is executed in the application one by manager access group user will be shared to user one. Actually, this is wrong. The design of data page is okay, but access group wise and application wise, this design of sharing will fail. So database concept itself is failing in this case. So now we need a solution. The database concept of sharing should not fail at the same time. Whenever a requester is requesting for any rule, the access group related application related rule should run. But because of sharing, the access group related application related activity is not running. Previous user different access group related application and the related activity is being executed and that data is being shared. So here the problem what is there is like either it is violating the access group rules or either it is violating the database sharing concept suppose if we design it like it has to be executed with the respect to access group related application related activity uh, database concept will fail and if you are sharing the concept of access group will fail so we need a solution where no fundamentals of the prpc should be failing or getting violated so for this reason pega has come up with an option of 
access group on node level data pages now what happens is when a manage uh, let's imagine the data page has an access group of administrator and now a manager access group operator when he requests for the data page node level at the time of execution of data page at the node level that manager access group of operator manager will be overridden with the administrator access group of the data page so now at that particular moment till the data page runs the manager operator will have administrator access group administrator access group related application related activity will get executed rule sets related activity will get executed and now when second requester comes user access group for him the administrator access group gets overridden when he request data page is already there what is the activity that it has to execute this time is administrator related access group related rule set related activity only so in this case already it is executed on the same data page data will be shared and after the execution of the data page is completed the operator access group will be set back to the original access group and thus implementing this mechanism pega has still stick to its fundamentals of sharing the data page as well as executing the specific rules of the uh, related to the access group so that is why we need um, access group at the node level data pages i hope you enjoyed the today session with the data pages so if you have any questions or queries related to data pages please mention in the comment box we'll try to cover uh, questions in the next video thank you so much